Thank you for joining us for the December Community Connection. I'm Brian Strand. Noka County Historical Society has a new exhibit highlighting the Federal Cartridge's 100 years of operations. Or maybe you would like to help the History Center preserve history by sponsoring an artifact through their Adopt an Artifact program. Welcome to the Anoka County Historical Society. I'm Rebecca ebnett Dazens, the Executive Director. We're in Anoka on 3rd Avenue, right across from the parking, so you've got plenty of spaces to put your car when you come and see the Federal Historical Exhibit. Federal Cartridge has been open for 100 years now, and we're celebrating their birthday with this new exhibit. We would love for you to stop in and see some of the very interesting stories about the people behind the business. One of the things you'll see when you come to the exhibit is a 1925 image of the original employee group. We've got all of their names, which is very important when you're taking care of your own personal family history. We've got profiles of them that you can look at and a few artifacts around as well. You can even see Bob Allen's safety glasses. When you've stopped in and seen the federal exhibit, let us know what you think. And if you have other family members who have back history at the federal plant, let us know, we would love your story. You might have stopped in also during the ghost tour season of September and October. We made $21,000 from that. So thank you so much to those who went on the tour. We had 1,500 people come through the museum. Anoka is a big place for Halloween, what can we say? We have an Adopt an Artifact program that we're just starting. That you can take one of the exhibit items that you might find here and you can adopt it. Maybe there's something in a box that catches your fancy. It all started several years ago when we had a group of volunteers come through and reevaluate our quilt collection. They took photos, they rolled them out, they looked at them, took conditions reports, and then carefully re-rolled them so that they would be stored for better purposes in the future. They fell in love with the quilts and we said, maybe you could adopt them. So that's where the Adopt an Artifact program came from originally. We're rebooting it now and there's all sorts of items in the collection that you could adopt for the year. We'll make you a social media post that you can share out. We'll give you a certificate and a photo of the item that you have been adopted. We've got items like the, uh, there's a watch fob that's made from a piece of human skull. We could adopt that. Um, Ham Lake Anytime Fitness has adopted the Charles Atlas fitness routine. That's appropriate. Maybe you're into mortuary tools. We've got some of those. So come check it out. On our website, we have an online collection. Look through there and see what speaks to you. There's gotta be something that goes along with whatever you're interested in. Thanks so much for your support. It's a research library that we have here. So you can come and look up abstracts of your home. You can find all sorts of information in the city directories. We have a nice collection of yearbooks so you can get all kinds of data on people. If you're looking on our website and you find something that you're really interested in, go ahead and shoot us an email or maybe give us a phone call. We can pull it off the shelf and you can look at it. Everything here is held in the public good. Our job is to hold things and keep them safe for future generations. So they're actually owned by you as the public. We're just the ones that keep things safe. As a 501c3 nonprofit, we are always interested in having new members and donors as well as volunteers. So any way that you can give to us, whether it's time, talent, or treasure, we would love to get to know you better. Just stop in and Sarah, our volunteer coordinator, can set you up with an amazing project that suits what you're interested in. Maybe there's a skill that you'd like to get back. Maybe there's something that you do as a hobby. Like we had someone come in as a clock maker and they fixed up all of our grandfather clocks. So maybe there's a hidden talent that you have that could really benefit our collection. Becoming a member supports us because that's where our board members come from. And as a governance structure, we really need people with foresight and thought to look past the five and 10 year mark and see where we're going as an organization. Year end donors are critical to making us as a nonprofit successful for 2023. We would love to be included in your year end giving. You can do all of that on our website at anocacountyhistory.org or you can find my email Rebecca at anocacountyhistory.org. We're located physically 
at 2135 3rd Avenue North in Anoka, right across from the Government Center. Christmas trees decorate many homes during the holiday season. Natural Christmas trees pose a bigger risk of fire if not properly maintained. Hi, I'm James Lang, Fire Marshal and Chief 2 with Fridley Fire Department, here to talk to you today about some tips of fire safety with Christmas trees. If you're using an artificial tree this season, make sure that when you purchase it, it says that it has a tag that says it's fire retardant. If you have an older artificial tree, especially one that is, uh, has electricity and the lights built in, you want to make sure that all of those lights are still working according uh, correctly and that um, nothing is worn out or broken. If you're using a real tree, make sure that the tree is uh, fresh, that the needles and stuff aren't falling off when you purchase it. And then before putting it in the tree stand, you want to cut at least two inches off at the base of the trunk. Once you place it in the stand and get it set up, you want to add water immediately. When placing lights on your Christmas tree, make sure that, you, that the lights are not worn, that the cords aren't frayed. If you're replacing your lights or purchasing new ones, LED lights are cooler and use less electricity than incandescent bulbs. Next, we have a video that shows what happens with Christmas trees that are watered regularly versus trees that are not watered regularly, which is why you'll see it's very important to water your tree every day. So as you can see from the video, it's very important to water your tree every day. A well-watered tree, if a fire starts in it, the fire will stay smaller and grow much more slower than a tree that is unwatered. So from all of us here at Fridley Fire, have a happy and safe holiday season. This winter, it's important to make sure that you keep all fire hydrants clear. When we show up at a fire and we have to use the hydrant, it takes us a long time to remove all the snow away from the hydrant. And remember, a fire doubles in size every minute, so every second counts. How you can help us is to clear out the hydrant, but then to make sure it's clear three feet all the way around the hydrant and all the way to the street. That way we'll be able to find it quickly and we'll also be able to hook up and get water on the fire to protect you and your home as fast as possible. It's as easy as one, two, three for you to be able to assist us in keeping hydrants clear. First of all, go to our website at fridleymn.gov and register for the Adopt a Hydrant program. Second, keep the hydrants clear, three feet around in all directions with a clear pathway going directly to the street. And third, once you've registered to adopt a hydrant, you'll be entered in a drawing for a gift card to a local Fridley, Fridley business. So you can win something, we make the drawing every month. It's as easy as that, one, two, three. So please help us keep hydrants clear and our community safe this winter. The Fridley Public Safety Department would like to wish you a happy holiday season. Be attentive when cooking, and when you go to sleep at night, put out your candles and holiday lights. Please be mindful of the changing winter driving conditions. Don't drink and drive, and use a designated driver. <laughs> Happy holidays from all of us at Fridley Public Safety. We cannot stress enough how important it is to have vehicles removed from city streets during snow removal. 
This year, the city is stepping up enforcement of the winter parking regulations. Hi, I'm Sergeant Patrick Faber with the Fridley Police Department here today to talk about the winter parking ordinance. It starts November 1st and goes through April 1st. We enforce uh, snow parking uh, between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. and our officers will be out there enforcing the parking ordinance of no parking on the streets during those time periods. Uh, also, we enforce uh, impeding snow removal. So when the public works is out there removing snow off the streets uh, and your vehicle's on the street and it's impeding our snow removal, uh, you may be ticketed for that or towed for that. Uh, if your vehicle is parked uh, on the street for more than one consecutive day, uh, it may also be towed and tagged for that. And if you need to get a hold of us about any parking ordinance questions, you can call us at the Fridley Police Department at 763-572-3629. Thank you. Winter parking restrictions start November 1st and run through April 1st. This means that there is no parking on city streets from 2 a.m. until 6 a.m. or during or immediately after a snowstorm. By removing our cars from city streets, it allows us to help our plow drivers more efficiently and safely plow our roads. It also allows for emergency vehicles to reach their destination sooner. If your vehicle is not removed, it will be ticketed and towed. For more information, visit the City of Fridley website. We thank you for your cooperation. Winterfest moved back to the Springbrook Nature Center last year. It will return to Springbrook again this year. Hello, uh, my name is Jessica Nelson Roll. I'm a recreation coordinator here at the city of Fridley, and I'm here with my winter friend. We are here to invite you to Winterfest. Winterfest is our celebration of winter. Um, it will occur here at Springbrook Nature Center on January 21st, which is a Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are so excited. We have lots of fun things planned. Um, our annual medallion hunt is always very popular. There will be a $100 prize if you do find the medallion. Uh, we'll have kick sleds that you can try out. You can use snowshoes like um, I was doing here with my friend. Um, we'll have fat tire biking you can try out here at Springbrook. Snow painting, you can launch snowballs with our amazing snowball launcher. We'll have story time campfires and s'mores, and our friends from the Fridley Police Department will be doing a canine demonstration as well. So again, the event is on Saturday, January 21st from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. here at Springbrook, and the event is free. If, and don't worry, if you do get cold, we will have um, some tables set up inside with different vendors that include uh, Coon, Cre Coon Creek Watershed District and also um, the North Suburban Center for the Arts, among others. So we hope to see you there. Hello everyone, my name is Skylar Ritz and I am the Recreation Specialist here for Fridley. I have done a lot with after school programs, which, which includes arts and crafts, along with preschool sports. And that's where you can see me around along with some field trips too. And I am here to tell you about our volleyball league that will be for adults happening in January, January 9th. It will be for women's and co-ed. And the registration is open now, so make sure you register. Are you looking for something fun for your kids to do over winter break? Then join us at Freely Recreation on one of our winter field trips. We will be headed to the Shoreview Community Center where we'll visit the aquatics park and also the indoor playground and another day, we'll be headed to explore all things winter at Wargo Nature Center. Registration is open now, but spots are limited, so make sure you sign up soon for grades K through five. Springbrook Nature Center is surrounded by 127 acres of beautiful wilderness in the heart of the Twin Cities. With over three miles of hiking trails, Springbrook is a wonderful place to immerse yourself in the outdoors. The Nature Center also provides valuable wildlife habitat and is an important part of the Springbrook Creek watershed. 
4.1 square miles of land, including stormwater runoff from Northtown Mall, Walmart, and 85th Avenue, drains into Springbrook Creek, which flows through the Nature Center before discharging into the Mississippi River. While in the Nature Center, Springbrook Creek flows through the Springbrook Wetland, which acts as a natural filter to remove sediment and other pollutants from the water. The Coon Creek Watershed District, which is the government agency charged with overseeing Springbrook Creek and the Coon Creek watersheds, is also testing a filtration device made of activated charcoal and iron-enhanced sand at the Springbrook Dam. Check out all the different water resources as you walk through the Nature Center. And the next time you see a storm sewer, think about where all that water goes. Maybe it even comes here. Hello everyone, I'm Lieutenant Nick Knavely. Recently, the City of Fridley launched a new program called SafeCam. Security cameras can be a great tool when solving crimes, but sometimes we're not always aware of who has surveillance cameras or other potentially vital information to help solve a crime. The Fridley Public Safety Department is asking residents and businesses to voluntarily register their private video surveillance systems with the department and allow officers to contact them should a crime occur near where the camera is located. The SafeCam program is 100% voluntary and does not provide Fridley Public Safety access to security camera systems that are privately owned by participants. For more information or to register your camera, visit fridleymn.gov safecam. Thank you for helping keep our city safe. Meet Sally. Sally is busy preparing a delicious turkey dinner. Meet Johnny. Johnny is getting excited for visits from family and friends. But where's Dad? Dad has a choice. What will Dad choose? What choice will you make? I'm Fridley Police Chief Brian Werke, and our officers stand ready to protect with extra DUI enforcement. Help us keep you safe, keep our kids safe, and keep our streets safe. Make the choice to never drink and drive. Happy holidays. Are you looking for a way to serve the community and the environment? The Rice Creek Watershed District is looking for folks to serve on their Citizen Advisory Board. Applications are being accepted until December 31st. Check out their website at ricecreek.org for more details. That's it for this month's Community Connection. Be sure to subscribe to email updates and follow the City of Fridley on Facebook, Instagram, Nextdoor, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I'm Brian Strand, and thank you for watching Fridley Municipal Television.
This has been a production of Fridley Municipal Television. Thanks for watching.